Our market monitor joins us now to talk more about today's sell-off and also to prepare us for next week. He is Michael Cugino. He is the president and portfolio manager of the Permanent Portfolio Family of Funds, an investment firm with $5 billion under management. Good to see you, Michael. Welcome. You as well, Sue. So talk to me about what happened today. It, it wasn't just the global sell-off. You think a couple key data points might also have had something to do with it. Well, sure. I think the one thing, obviously, the things that you and Bob mentioned are accurate, but also I would say the inflation data coming in uh, today was was getting awfully close or exceeding uh, the Fed's target of 2 percent. And I think you get back to the very big concerns in the U.S. about uh, the closer the Fed gets to its inflation target, employment targets, uh, the, the more likely they're going to start raising interest rates. And so, um, you know, whether you consider food and energy or not, you're getting around that 2 percent or exceeding it. Mm -hmm. And that means the pressure on the Fed to act uh, more quickly than normal is, are, is there. Are you one who thinks that the Fed will act in the second half of the year or any time this year or not? Well, certainly they could, although I wouldn't be surprised if they do nothing. I mean, the U.S. economy is showing some weakness. We're still trying to figure out if there's sustainable growth there. Corporate earnings may have seen the peak of their cycle. They're being hurt by strong dollar uh, issues and weakening global economic growth. And, uh, and so those factors are weighing or giving the Fed more wiggle room to delay. On the other hand, arguably, uh, a return to normalized interest rates, I think, would have been a good thing to do a long time ago. So I'm in the camp that uh, they should be doing something. But even if they do, I think there's a limit to how far they can move. The U.S. economy isn't strong enough to withstand an aggressive, quick move. And so uh, I, and also a, an increase to the deficit if you start raising interest rate costs. So I think uh, it's going to depend on how aggressive, how quickly mm -hmm. they move and, uh, and how how much the U.S. economy can sustain. We certainly saw a lot of volatility about earnings. We have more earnings next week, and I want to get to some of your picks because they are all reporting next week. You like Facebook at this point. Why? Yeah, it's a classic early stage growth story. They've got a tremendous intangible asset of information, and they're still discovering new and better ways to monetize that, that information. I think they're going to continue to do that. We've seen it grow into its multiples. It's not a cheap stock, but uh, revenue growth, earnings growth, cash growth are all there, so we like it in the long term. And you also like Janice. Yeah, financial services, asset management, a business we know well. There's a lot of operating leverage there. Their funds are performing better. Um, you know, whether the gross uh, addition, Bill Gross addition, succeeds in the long term or not, they're, uh, they're still doing very well. The, the margins are improving, and fund performance has been better. So we expect that stock to continue to outperform. And a play on commodities in Freeport McMoran, energy and copper. Yeah, an area that's not too well liked right now, yeah. but it's tremendously oversold. We think in the long term, uh, supply is going to outstrip, uh, or I'm sorry, demand will outstrip supply. And, you know, there's a, a good dividend there. Uh, they're in energy and copper primarily. We think those are commodities that the world's going to need. So this is one of those classic buy low and uh, ride the story if you have a strong stomach types of names. All right. Michael, have a great weekend. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Michael Cugino with the permanent portfolio of a family of funds.